you're working in most office buildings, you're going to see a lot of bags just like this. People are going to carry in their laptops, their lunches, uh, maybe, maybe even their work shoes or something like that in a bag like this. With just a few additions though, this can become your get home bag. Something to use just in case you're not able to commute home by normal means. Now normal means your car or the train or the bus or whatever you take to work isn't running. And you don't have the ability to call somebody for a ride for whatever reason. That's really kind of doesn't matter. So let's just jump into using this to get you home. But before we go too far into that, I'd like to cover a couple of basic things that I look for in the bag itself. One of them are these external pockets for holding your water bottle, just because it's nice and convenient. And the second one is, if you notice this, it doesn't look like any kind of military or tactical bag. This is just basically a student's backpack. The other thing I like to have on them is some sort of hip belt, even if it's just a moderate small one like this to help distribute that load, just in case you are walking home, because the average person commutes 20 or more miles to work. That said, you're looking at a four to six hour commute under ideal conditions, and if your only option is to walk, conditions probably aren't ideal. So all that said, let's take a good look at this. What do you need your get home bag to provide? The first thing, if you live in any, any of the uh, northern areas of the country, you need shelter. Even in the southern area, you may need shelter in the summertime from extreme heat. So you have to be able to form a microclimate around yourself using the clothes that you have on, which should be weather appropriate, plus a few things in your bag. Now, if you can't dress for the weather because of where you work, a dress code or anything, you're going to have to carry those extras in your bag. For us in the winter here, like it is now, part of that is, is wearing a proper winter coat. So what you're going to find in the bag is going to be kind of minimal. I actually did a video earlier on that referencing this small kit. This is our good day bag kit. I will link to that video at the end of this one. And that's going to go over some of the shelter elements in here. But suffice it to say that you need something to act as a tarp. Um, a Mylar blanket's a great one, and you're going to want some cordage to tie that down in case you have to use it as a tarp. Of course, there are other things, and you can go ahead and watch that video to get the details in there. The important part about the shelter is that it's going to be able to provide you a block from wind or moisture or anything like that, and you're going to be able to avoid hypothermia in a cold situation or avoid hyperthermia from the sun. That's where things like that Mylar blanket shine. It can be used to reflect up to 90% of your heat back into you, or it can reflect the sun away from you. So shelter, the number one thing that you're going to need, because odds are your commute's going to be longer than that four to six hours. <clears throat> the next thing that you're going to find necessary is the ability to gather water. Because even this, this little Nalgene bottle, this is a quart of water. On a normal day, I'll drink two of these just at the office. So you're going to need a way to get more because you're probably not going to be carrying enough water in there. So one of the things you can do if you work in an urban environment is you can use what's called a Silcock key. Now this is my version of that good day bag. This is the way I carry it. It has all of the same things in it plus a few other small things including my mini med kit and this. This is a Silcock key. This is how you access all of those spigots on the outside of commercial buildings. Now, you don't go and do that because it's convenient. This is something that you're doing because you're in an emergency. I'll never advocate trespass or stealing, but you're going to have to make that decision if it comes down between having no water or maybe doing a trespass. That's up to you. The other thing that you're going to need to be able to do is to purify water just in case. If you don't have access to those commercial water sources or well or a fountain or something, and you have to get that water you know, out of a pond, even if, like, even if it's one of those subdivision ponds or something. And the, probably the best way to do that is instead of carrying an algae bottle, you can carry these single-walled stainless steel bottles. Sometimes I actually do carry this one. Um, other times, the plastic algae. So if you're carrying one of these, you can actually just take the cap off of it and direct boil over a fire or heat source. If you're carrying the Nalgene, an easy way to get away to boil that water <clears throat> is to use one of these small camper's cups. 
A lot of people refer to these as a GSI cup because that's the most famous company. But you can get this version that you see here at Walmart for about $5. They're plenty durable and they look pretty good. And that's kind of important because you're not trying to draw attention to yourself. So although I do cook in cups like this, this isn't typically the one that I cook in. I keep this one looking nice and new and it kind of serves as my coffee cup at work. So that way it doesn't draw attention. The nice thing is the Nalgene bottle nests right into it, as does this um, clean canteen. So really you're not losing any space to carry it. And it'll pretty much go unnoticed in one of those outside water bottle pockets. Now another method of purifying water beyond boiling is to use a chemical purification. This can be bleach, it can be iodine, it can be water purification tabs. It can actually even be a Sawyer filter or any, any other kind of filters. I mentioned the Sawyer just because it's the most readily available, but really any filter. In my case, I also carry just some water purification tablets, and that's in this kit. So there you have it, at least two ways to purify water and a way to collect it. A special note, when you do your Nalgene bottles, or any bottle for that matter, I like to do the wide mouth because it's easier to collect water, especially if it's a shallow running stream or anything like that. It's a lot easier to get the water in here than into a narrow bottle opening, like on a typical water bottle. The third thing that you're going to want your get home bag to be able to provide you is a means of navigation. Now, everybody knows their way to and from work. Get a map anyway. The odds are is if you're depending on your, your Lamborghinis to take you home, things have gone sideways and you might be following railroad tracks, you might be following back roads that you don't know, you may even find yourself cutting across open land. So get a map, just a Rand McNally map of your area. Get one that shows all of the different roads. You used to be able to get these at gas stations. Nowadays, I think it's probably faster just to order them from Rand or from Amazon. But they run between 5 and $7. It's a very good investment to have. And while you've got it, go ahead and mark some routes home on it. And mark some landmarks that you can use for orienteering. Which brings us to our next subject. And that's going to be your compass to finish off navigation. You will normally never ever use this if you're following a road or anything home because you already know the way. But should you have to leave that road, you're going to want to know at least generally what direction you're going. This particular compass is a lensatic which allows you to take an azimuth. This is an entirely different subject that we'll have to cover in another video or basically it's orienteering and it's a skill that you're going to want to develop if you think that you're going to be walking or taking alternative communication anywhere in the case of any disaster. Now on this subject of navigation, your most potent tool is still going to be your cell phone. Even if the network is down, your cell phone can hold downloaded maps. It can also hold um, a, just a basic compass app that if there's any connectivity at all it'll work. And most emergencies if not, every emergency you're likely to see are going to be transient in nature and eventually those lines are going to open up and it can spare you a longer walk. It can let people know you're okay. It's got a ton of uses. Most common is the flashlight and you're going to find that's going to be draining your battery between that and searching for signal. So carrying a small emergency power bank like this will actually double the capacity of most cell phones. It's about the size of a thumb drive. It charges up simple and all you got to do is plug your cell phone into it you know, you're going to, of course, carry your charging cable with it, and you double the life of your cell phone. So you definitely want to have one of those. Okay, the other thing that you want for navigation is a light source. I've already mentioned the flashlight on your cell phone, but having a separate flashlight is definitely a great idea. This stops you from using up the light on your phone, and it's also generally a better beam for that. This is a small mag light. It's a Solitaire AAA. These things run about $10 in LED. The batteries last an unbelievably long time and they're plenty bright to get you by. I also carry a spare AAA battery in this bag. Almost no weight penalty and it's something that's really tough to beat. Now any flashlight's going to work. I like this one since it's about the diameter of a pen and it throws light like a much bigger light. Um, again, spare battery power bank for the cell phone, you got plenty of light. Coming up next on our list of things that you're going to need is fuel. And I don't mean fuel for a fire, I mean fuel for your body. You're going to need some calories. One of the things that I do, <clears throat> I have this core stuff that I always carry. It's my spork, which is like probably my favorite item ever. 
a little bit of tea just to let the spirits, and I've got some um, instant oatmeal in here. When I'm commuting with this, I also add in either the packs of tuna, packs of chicken, some elevation bars or cliff bars, you know, those meal replacements. And I try to pack in somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 calories. Now, I take a layered approach to the get home bag. That's what I carry normally because if I'm running late and forget my lunch, I've got plenty here. If I do get stranded coming home and I have to wait it out, I've got something so I'm not hungry. If there's more of a threat than that, like if the roads are really icy or if there's, um, well, 2021's favorite, quote, civil unrest, I would up that calorie count. And this can go as far as carrying a stripped MRE in here. Or you may have that in your vehicle. Either way, you're going to want to have that. So the goal is... When that threat level elevates, raise it from the 1,500 to 2,000 calories to 2,000 to 3,000. You're going to want more than you typically have in a day because you're going to be expending a lot more energy. Now, another thing that you can do, and I really recommend this, is grab a bag or two of your favorite candy and throw it in there. Um, the sugar is good for an instant energy push, and the morale boost is unbeatable. And the last thing that I can mention that is great to have in there is either some instant coffee if you believe you're going to have a way to heat the water up or some source of caffeine like that or those um five hour energies or i, I can't remember what all these version of it is but it's a heavy b12 shot plenty of energy almost no weight penalty and it doesn't dehydrate you it's a great way to go now moving on we've got our calories and food you're going to want some basic first aid items and this is more of a comfort thing than anything else as a matter of fact, mine fit in this little bag, and all I have in here is a little bit of betadine gel, some alcohol pads, band-aids, and moleskin. And if you're not familiar with moleskin, get familiar with it, because if you're going to walk any distance and if you haven't um, broken your shoes, this is going to be your best friend. It's a total blister stopper. Check it out on any hiker's blogger page, and it's legendary. In addition to that, I carry just basic over-the-counter pain relief. You just get these little, these are the little um, plastic bottles that have a few pills in them that you can get pretty much any gas station. If you got prescriptions, go ahead and add a day's worth of prescriptions to that if it fits. If you need an antihistamine or anything like that, anything for your area or your particular situation, it should fit in here and it carries really, really nicely. Plus, if you carry a few little extra aspirin, your coworkers may thank you for just having it. Um, Beyond that, I do always carry on me, and this is part of my everyday carry, is a bandana. And these can be used as an impromptu wrapping, bandage, sling, just about anything if it's large enough. Lots of ways to improvise that. But you're not, the idea here is that you're not carrying a full-blown medical kit. You're carrying enough to keep your comfort up, stop something from getting infected, and fix a boo-boo on the way home. Because ultimately, this kit keeps you moving so you can get home. I... That would cover about everything solid in there. The other thing you're going to want is seasonal items. If it's winter, you're going to want some of those chemical hand and foot warmers. If it's summertime, you're going to probably want some sunscreen and you're going to want some bug repellent. You're trying to keep the annoying things at bay with that and stay comfortable. Now, we're at item number six that this bag is going to provide, and that's going to be communication. You're walking so we can safely assume that your cell phone is not working. You've got your text sent, and when the lines come back up, people will know where you are and what your plan is. You're going to want some other way to record information or possibly leave a note, especially if it's a wider spread issue and you're meeting up with people. In that case, you're going to want a pen, and you want it to be a good one. So I really like Fisher Space Pens. Um, they do tend to disappear, though, because I load my pens out. I found um, these pens for about $10 a piece that actually have a pretty good seal on them. They take the Fisher Space ink, which is what's nice about that is it writes on just about any kind of paper, whether it's treated or not treated, you know, most famously right in the rain pads. It's pressurized. It can write upside down, and they don't break. Plus, this pen's got a little rubber gasket in there, so it seals up. If I drop this or my bag gets soaked, it'll still write. Well worth about roughly $10. You can find these on Amazon. You can find them in most sporting goods stores. The other thing that I carry is just a basic composition book. These little tiny books you can get at any dollar store. I just keep it in a plastic bag so it doesn't get wet. Um, there are writing rain pads that you can get. 
I kind of just stick with these because honestly, if I've stopped long enough to write something down, I'm out of the weather already. And if I'm leaving a note, I'm not going to leave it in the weather because it's just going to probably get washed away or lost. In the worst case scenario, I can leave that note in this plastic bag for whoever's got to find it. One other optional item that I personally don't carry, but I know some people who do, would be a radio, either like your higher end walkie talkies, GRS, or a, one of the really famous ones that people seem to love are the Baofeng mini ham radios. I guess I guess they're technically a ham radio, but some of the stuff gets into requiring licensing. Should the need arise for the walkie talkies and you're using a GRS, which is typically what you can buy in big box stores or sporting goods stores, you're only looking at a couple miles of range. But some of them do have a nice scanning function, so you can use them to listen in on your, on your immediate area. I myself don't find them that useful, so I do not carry one. A lot of other people do. Now we're going to round this out to the basic tools that you can carry in this. Now this is all going to be set to your particular situation. In mine, I can't carry a whole lot of higher end heavy duty tools in with me. Uh, matter of fact, I have to walk through a metal detector. My bag goes through a scanner every day. And that is why I choose to have this in my bag. And this is just a Swiss AOX Farmer. Um, you don't necessarily have to get the AOX. I just got it because it looks nicer. It looks a little bit like men's jewelry, so it tends to raise less eyes. Um, this is a pretty capable small friction folder. And it's from the Victorinox brand, which is my preference. And what I look for in them is I look for this saw. This saw really punches above its weight class if you need it for making shelter, a makeshift shelter on the way home, getting firewood or anything else. It's going to do the job. We've actually taken this camping and tested it. It's an invaluable tool. The other thing is if you look at the Farmer Series of Knives and Cadet, they're built on a slightly larger scale where they have a larger main blade. It's fairly functional. It's about as good as it gets with a friction folder. Very, very useful. And then that's in addition to having your two screwdrivers and your can opener, which you definitely want to have in your kit. So if your multi-tool doesn't carry a can opener, you're going to want to add like a P38 or a P52 can opener to your kit as well, just so you can get food from cans if needed. So that just about covers it. We've got some basics that you can add to your kit. The kit's going to provide you an expanded capability somewhere from 12 to 36 hours, maybe stretching it out to 48 if you layer it up a little bit. This is designed to be used with your everyday carry, and it should be loaded down with the items that you're really going to use every day. Myself, I've used this maybe three times in about 10 years of carrying it. Uh, this has been delayed trains where I needed something to eat and was stuck in the station after dark and then, you know, in Chicago and really didn't want to go out because I didn't know when the train was going to leave. You don't want to miss it coming home. Um, my commute for a while was a little over two hours each way. My train got stuck on icy tracks. And honestly, having the hand warmers and foot warmers was pretty nice because to conserve power, they weren't keeping the cars very warm. We were stuck there a good solid eight hours. So the food really helped, and um, I was able to give out some candy to some other people that were in there and uh, made some friends and kept the morale up a little bit. Even the flashlight was nice just to be able to have a brighter light to read by. There's This kit's not designed for an apocalyptic event. It's going to smooth out anything that you run into. So once again, if you're a little more interested in going into depth on this, we do have a video on what I call the good day bag. This can make a bad day good in a hurry, and it's going to go over some of the tenets of what you can do for shelter and comfort using the contractor's bag and mylar blanket and such. One other thing that we cover in there is these uh, homemade candles. And this is really nice because where I work, I can't take a Trangia stove or an MSI stove or something in there. I just can't carry that. The building I work in houses courthouses and they don't like flammables coming in. This candle though doesn't bother anybody because it's just an Altoids tin and some wax. Now it's not going to be the most efficient way to boil water or cook, but in a pinch I could. And once again, we do mention that in that good day bag, so this is really something that you're going to want to look into doing. By something, I mean some sort of source for cooking. So I'm going to wrap it up with that. This is my get-home bag. It layers onto my everyday carry, and it plays into what I have in my vehicle, too. This expands my capabilities out to almost 48 hours with everything that I have, 
and it allows me to carry everything I need for a day of work in, in one bag. It looks like everybody else's, it doesn't draw any attention, and it's imminently useful. So I'm Joe, this is KSG. If you found this handy and useful, go ahead and like this video so we can spread the word to others. Subscribe so you don't miss anything, and by all means, share us with your friends.